Hi, my name is Pam Moran and I am Superintendent of Albemarle County Public Schools in uh, Albemarle County, Virginia. I'd love to talk a minute about what I really see as one of the big challenges for educators today and that is that as we're making the shift in a turning point that moves us from 20th century learning to what many have called 21st century learning or contemporary learning, that a lot of the conversation is around what is it that we really should be doing in schools. And I go to some of the stories because as a superintendent I have a chance to really collect a lot of stories and what I really find is that when our young people are really getting engaged around their passions, their sense of voice, their capability to really have influence, that what that does is it really causes us to think very deeply about the idea that we are no longer planning for teaching but today we're designing for learning. Here's an example. As we've been transforming our libraries, one of the things that we found is that the libraries of the past, which I would call uh, the libraries in which the write it, print it, read it, recall it model was in place, today we have what I call a search, connect, communicate, and make model. So here's an example. When we first started transforming libraries in Albemarle County, we started to look at what are the kinds of things that kids really could do in libraries that's different than just going to find resources that sit statically on shelves. An example of that is that we've added hacker spaces, genius bars, help desk, design labs, music construction studios, poetry cafes, areas where kids can collaborate, where they can do what I call the best of what human learning has always been, which is social learning, in areas that really are meaningful to them. So here's an example of how one of our students really gained a sense of agency. So this student we were really concerned about because he was likely not going to graduate this year. He had transferred in from a, a state uh, outside of Virginia. He uh, had actually been incarcerated for some time, but he walked into our library and discovered a music studio. When he went in, he started to really think about what he really wanted to say to the world. He began to compose lyrics. He recorded rap music. He started to collaborate with other students. He began to produce his music, to post it to YouTube. And the next thing we knew, we had a student who went from being highly disengaged in school to being highly engaged. That happened because of our library transformation. Right before the end of the school year, I'm driving in my car from one place to another, which is pretty typical when you're working in a school division of 726 square miles. I got a phone call, and it was from the principal. And the principal had this young man in the room with him and said, I have to tell you that he just finished his last course that he needed to graduate, and he will be graduating on time. I just had to pull off on the side of the road because what I thought about is very small changes, very small investments that we're making and transforming our learning spaces across the system are grabbing a bandwidth of students who never before have felt particularly engaged about school, and so whether it's kids constructing music, it's kids working uh, using 3D printers, doing design work, maker work, uh, writing poetry and presenting it as slam poetry, whatever it is that's going on in our libraries, one of the things that we know is that we have kids that are pursuing their passions, they're engaged, they're interested, and we're getting more and more of those kids to see school as a place where they want to be.